In this playthrough of Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, I'm going to ban the use of the regular jump and double jump that is usually bound to the A button. So how will I get around? With the bubble bash of course. When Spongebob uses this he gains vertical distance but not much horizontal. In the library I somehow managed to hit the button but am not able to get the sock because of how the platforms are positioned from each other. I'm still able to collect 50 shiny objects though, so I can leave the pineapple. I get the sock from talking to Patrick and can activate the button by using a bash into a bounce. If timed correctly, the platform will move below Spongebob while bashing. But I can't quite make it up to the underpants. This is probably a good time to mention that Spongebob can't grab a ledge during animations like when he's using the Viking's hat and bubble wand. I'll come back here later when I'm more comfortable with my movement. I grab the sock and spatula from Annoying Squidward. The next spatula I can get is the one for bungee jumping, and bashing into the bungee has some... interesting results. I need to use the wand to cancel the hat animation. This way I get to bungee like normal. With whatever that was out of the way, I earned golden spatula number 3. Hitting this button reveals... uh, uh oh. Reaching the newly elevated platforms isn't so bad. By using a bash and cancelling the animation with the wand, I'm allowed a small amount of horizontal movement. That and... weird collision. This jump is much harder and precise. I also have to avoid getting hit by the robot. You can use the bubble bash mid-fall, so by intentionally running off the platform and holding forward for a second before bashing, I gain just enough distance to make it onto the next platform. Just don't panic and get knocked off, and you're at the next checkpoint. A similar obstacle ahead has multiple platforms between goo, so this time falling down and then bashing isn't an option. In a strange twist of fate, running directly at certain angles is actually what worked best for me here. For all of these except the last one, that's a little too far to just run towards. A bash wand worked perfectly fine here. And then I'm immediately greeted by a platform that lowers when standing on it. By bubble bashing repeatedly, it can raise, but finding the right place to stand when jumping is tricky. Did I say place? I meant pixel, apparently. I'll take it. This awards me with my fourth golden spatula. They're not going to be easy to get from now on, so I will cherish it. The slide sections are concerning because other than moving left and right, the only other thing you can do is jump. Fortunately, all that means is I can't grab a sock after the slide. This obstacle was difficult until I realized by using the bubble wand I would keep enough height to pass it. An easy jump is immediately followed by a hard one. One that I think is possible, but decide to try out the other ones leading to buttons after many tries since pressing them is all or nothing. I don't think it was necessary, but I get damage boosted to the other side for one of the buttons. These platforms look hard too, so I decide to come back here later. I buy a spatula from Mr. Krabs, and with five, I now have enough to go to downtown Bikini Bottom. There's no way I collect all the wheels thanks to some being on the rooftop. The first obstacle is this ramp jump, since the movement is wonky if you don't actually jump well on the sponge ball. After a couple more tries, I get it though. I also pick up the sock over here. Getting through this hole is difficult, but ultimately useless anyway since it's just a bus stop to turn into Sandy who has zero jump replacements. I inefficiently grind for a while to get into the sea needle. If I can destroy all the tiki's, I'll get a spatula. The problem is actually getting to the tiki's. No matter how many times I tried, I couldn't get on the bungee. Fortunately for me, you can actually destroy them while falling to your doom. But there's one group of tiki's I couldn't get to. These moving platforms are difficult to move from one to another. Damage boosting might be able to help, but I'm gonna come back later when I'm better at movement. I even tried to lasso them with Sandy, but they're just out of reach. Still in downtown, I can destroy the tiki's over the button to press it and reveal a spatula. It's a bit tricky to climb, but I found that approaching it from the right side of the statue is the best way to move to the leg. Getting to the hat isn't much easier, and when I finally do get up there, I just run up and to the left until I eventually touch the spatula. And while I'm here, I might as well grind for shiny objects. I decide to grind until I can reach the next area, so I get golden spatula in numbers 7, 8, 
9, and 10. Now I can finally go to Gulagoon and oh no, this is the first obstacle. After bashing around like an idiot for a while, I bash around in a slightly less idiotic way to clear it. But I can't get any collectibles without clearing this obstacle. Patrick can throw a stone tiki to allow Spongebob to bash, but then there's no way to make the next one. So as far as I'm aware, there's nothing I can get other than shiny objects in Goo Lagoon. I need to pick up at least two spatulas I've missed. Otherwise, getting the other Mr. Crab spatulas will be just short of letting me into the Robot Sandy fight. And hey, look, I found out how to get up here. If I time my bash properly, I can reach the moving platform right as it's leaving, giving me enough time to make all the pseudo jumps necessary to get Golden Spatula number 11. I've definitely gotten better at these, since on my first try, after a damage boost, I almost make it to the end. One more try is all it takes to finally be able to press the second button. This one also takes two tries, since I panic and get knocked the wrong way on my first attempt. The next one goes much better. All three buttons being hit opens up a path to Patrick. He awards me with Golden Spatula number 12. The closest thing he has to a jump replacement is his belly attack, which can't pass even low obstacles. But I can reload the area as Spongebob and turn back into Patrick, only to get stuck again. Oh well, I know the cave requires double jumps anyways. I'm able to easily make these jumps now, and even destroy the missile launcher. Oh wait, I wasn't supposed to do that. Like I was saying, get hit by the missile twice in a row to clear these two jumps and make it to the checkpoint. Sandy can lasso while she falls. Because of this, she can break tiki's on the way down. Or if you want a different kind of spice, you can get damage boosted into a bungee to get golden spatula number 13. I grind shiny objects to get spatulas numbers 14 and 15. This grants access to robot Sandy, and honestly, I didn't think I'd get this far, so I'm pretty happy. Not being able to do a regular jump doesn't impact this fight in a meaningful way. Patrick gets hit guaranteed, but that's no issue, and he even gets tossed into the air by Sandy so I can ground pound. That's Golden Spatula number 16, meaning Spongebob unlocks the Bubble Bowl, and I have an entirely new set of areas to explore. Right away I know I'm not getting that spatula. The one in Sandy's dome is super easy though. The first spatula in the Mermelair is free, bringing me to 18. I can't get to the next area through this path. This Patrick mission might be doable. It's a little tricky, but you can walk through this. Then just fall off to respawn near the watermelon. There's really no need to jump for this button. The one I saved for last is the hardest because you have to throw the melon and then use the belly attack to move between platforms with the melon's timer to make it a little tricky, but not too bad. That's Spatula 19. Patrick can make this with the belly attack, and once the puzzle is solved, just teleport back to Barnacle Boy for Spatula 20. Then I can slide down to bridge this gap, only to find wall jumps which aren't allowed. While trying to bash upwards, this happens. I am stuck. By using the bubble bounce mid-bash, I can get to the top, only to find an even higher wall jump. I get damage boosted and immediately bash to hit a checkpoint meaning if I simply die, I get teleported to a new location. I get spatula 21 and the game's not done being broken yet, because despite standing next to a security button I haven't pressed, the game thinks I did. So yeah, spatula 22. And in case you're wondering, it's really easy to hit all the buttons legit in this challenge. The boss does a lot of damage, so I just have to make sure to dodge with the bash and wand combo to survive long enough to beat him. That's spatula 23. The disco tiles can actually be a pretty big threat, but that's nothing five pairs of underwear can't handle. Which means spatula 24. The one where you have to escort a metal ball is really tricky, mostly because you have to be really fast and also precise if you want to make these jumps in time. Every time you restart, you have to wait over a minute to get back to this point. That makes these jumps even more frustrating, but they are doable. I'm going to take a quick break from the spatula though. I gather some of the socks that I've missed until I get enough to get the 25th golden spatula from Patrick. Hey, you. <laughs> With 25 spatulas, I can go to rock bottom. It doesn't look like I can do much here. I can get a sock, make it up to this wall jump area, 
and slide down the slide, but there's nothing here. I try to somehow get up this wall with the damage boost, but I always seem to get knocked backwards. I finally find something I can do, and that scale up this slide with a sponge ball, which is kind of funny. When I reach the end, the game puts me in the tongue slide, but joke's on it because I hit the checkpoint. Now I can hit this button to place a time spatula, but time isn't exactly the issue. This huge gap is. By taking a shortcut, I end up on the opposite side. One with enemies that can damage boost me twice, so I can make it to golden spatula number 26. I retried the skip, but no matter how many times I did, I never made it. Even with the sponge ball touching the top, it wasn't enough. This obstacle might be passable under my rules, but I've already spent so much time trying it that I eventually had to call it. Back to the metal ball. This jump is doable if you take the same path as the ball, but it has weird collision. You still have time to make it to the next button though. The jump you have to make after this one is extremely difficult and super precise, so I fall. It can be done though. Then, since this path takes a while, the ball is in a dangerous spot, then it's finally in. I play it safe and try bowling from this platform, and oh my god, it's timed. All I have to do is make this jump that- that's all I have to do. <laughs> like I was saying, just make this easy pseudo jump, then bash your way until you get to the top. Remember, time's running out, so you better get there fast. Make sure to make it to the other platform, and there you- I couldn't take this level anymore. If it was the last golden spatula I needed to unlock another area, I would have continued because I think it's possible, but even with it and the last Mr. Krabs one, I'd only have 28, so that would be the end of my jumpless run. What I mean to say is it is the end of my jumpless run. I might try the museum jump some more and grind out the metal ball one, or maybe some comments will figure out something out that I didn't. Thanks for watching, if seeing me grind out these last spatulas interest you, let me know, and subscribe maybe? Without 30 spatulas, unlocking the next area is impossible, and even then I'd need 40 to go further in Bikini Bottom.